Right, sorry. It's a bit severe, that, wasn't it? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Didn't recognise without the old orange blanket, the belt. <laughs> Cheer up, eh? <laughs> What's your name? Mick. Sinead, what? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't recognise you. I've made a terrible... Mick! Thanks for coming tonight, Mick. Girlfriend saying serves you right for not fucking clapping, I told you. <laughs> you said you'd be cool, you know. <laughs> Sorry, you just said what? Oh, go on, tell us, please. <laughs> told him not to crap his trousers. <laughs> sort of motherly advice you just dish out to me. It's so, oh, so, so worth remembering though, isn't it? I must remember that. Never crack your throat. Sorry? I'm not picking up Radio 4 on this. All right, mate. All right. Something wearing jam rag. <laughs> Congratulations, I haven't heard the word jam rag since fucking junior school. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know what it meant then. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, we, what I'm doing is, if I could actually put these words together, they could be something quite good, but at the moment, it's, they're, not, they're not sentences, are they, mate? Really? <laughs> No, it's, it's always not. You make new friends, though, you come out, you know. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for joining in, mate. I bless you for that. And uh, I don't fucking want a big issue, basically. <laughs> All the audience have turned there. Why not? Why not? Why not? You're helping people. I do. Don't get me wrong. I do help people. If people are begging in the street, I'll always give them a quid, you know. Big hearted. I would. No, I do, because I think it's good that, you know, because people, no matter how poor they've got and how bad times have got, they've got some dignity, you know, that they haven't resorted to fucking busking, for example, you know. <laughs> That's to be encouraged. <laughs> you know, did you see people are busking now with a dog with them? They take a big fucking dog. That's cruel, that is, I think. You get people who are shit, you know, with a guitar, straight to London, and a dog. And I saw this one bloke, and I, was, I thought, I'll put a quid in the tin, you know, give him a hand. And I was just going to put a quid in his tin, and, and the dog put his paw over the tin, like that. <laughs> Don't fucking encourage him. <laughs> so I didn't. But I am, uh, I am, I'm a big hearted lad. Uh, uh, so, uh, what we got here? So, Mick, uh, thanks for coming tonight. Um, sorry, I feel, uh, if you'd rather I didn't speak to you, I'm just trying to be friendly, I'm not going to take the piss. You know, you look fairly hard, let's face it. <laughs> Fucking hell, you know, so I'm not going to go too far, so I'm dead when I get outside, you know, and all that stuff. Um, so, are you an old skinhead, Mick, or is this a sort of... Because you've got button-down collar, you know, cropped hair, and, uh, you know, I remember. It's a, it's a bit like watching a fucking Weetabix advert. <laughs> So do you like Scar and all that, Mick? You know, music. I don't mean like, on, you know, putting people on. <laughs> Scars on people's faces. I mean, the music. Do you, do you like that? Scarborough. <laughs> <laughs> that was clever. That, uh, this bloke here. In case you didn't hear that, it's a shame to let it just get wasted in the evening. I said, do you like Scar, Mick? And, and this bloke said, Scarborough. <laughs> And in, in case he's sort of left you behind a bit there, he, he took the, the word scar. <laughs> he built on it, you know, into a... Into a you've got to see some of resort in there. That was, that was real clever, that was. <laughs> or real clever, maybe. <laughs> But it was shit, you know. But I'm, you know, I'm working with what I've got here. I'm working, thinking on my feet, you know. And it's, uh, sometimes it's, it's not, uh, you know, it can be very funny, like Scarborough. And sometimes. <laughs> uh, timing is very important in this business. <laughs> no, bless, bless you, bless you for joining in, mate. Because not everyone does, do they, Mick? Just gonna tell me what sort of music you like, Mick. Am I, am I, am I right? Just as a conversation. So I'm honestly, I'm not taking the piss. I'm just having a friendly chat. Heavy. Fucking no trouble. <laughs> heavy, heavy music. Yeah. What like heavy metal? 
Joe Sacciani, Steve Vai, bands like that. Joe Sacciani? <laughs> <laughs> Friend, eh? <laughs> Camping together, yeah, all sorts. I've never heard of him actually. And what, so it's not heavy metal, it's not like Sabbath and stuff like that. I'm a bit out of date, I'm afraid. Mate. <laughs> instrumental heavy metal. Thanks. So, uh, do you always bring a technical advisor? <laughs> Oh, I like I like seventies music. I, I saw them all, you know. Sweet, free, deep purple. Any band whose title could be used to describe my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> what ever happened to Fuller Sponk? They were a good band. <laughs> Seemed to have it all going for them, and they they just fucking disappeared. It's a <laughs> difficult business, isn't it? I am. Um, I've been, it's a lovely year, isn't it? I like this place. What do you think of this, by the way? Is it, is it, have I gone too far now? Is it, is it, I, if you'd have seen the size of the fucking potato I had to use to bring that... <laughs> well, I, I, I did a, the last time I did it at a West End uh, theatre, was, it was a benefit gig. It was a benefit gig for um, Alzheimer's disease uh, research. You know this thing when old people get old and they start forgetting stuff and that? It could happen to any one of us. And I thought, it's, it, you know, it's a good... Um, <laughs> it's a good um, <laughs> tell him to fuck off. Tell him to fuck off. Like, look, that, you know, you let these people into the community and then you treat them like that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I, mean, I don't know. I wouldn't dream of telling you to fuck off, mate. <laughs> Theatre and, uh, and there it was, a benefit, Alzheimer's Disease Association. Got into the foyer, it was absolutely fucking packed in the foyer. And this old bloke came up and started chatting to me. He was about 80, you know, I was a bit. And we talked for about 20 minutes or so, you know, because the uh, smell of piss never bothered me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but he didn't like it, so he, he moved off. <laughs> It's a nerve sting, you know, sometimes it happens to me, sometimes it doesn't. Tonight, so far, I'm all right, but, you know... <laughs> don't piss your trousers, it's, it's another good habit. <laughs> so I went on stage, 1,500 people, all from the Alzheimer's Disease Association. I told this joke, and it went, well, big laugh, bit of applause. I thought, fuck it, I'll tell it again. <laughs> Seven times I told that joke. <laughs> it went better as the evening went on. I got more into it, you know. I was finding all, whole new things in it. Kept it quite short, you know, because you have to sort of remember the beginning to get the end. <laughs> it, was, it was good. One bloke I saw said to his wife, he says, very funny, oh, Frank, and she said, who? But I thought, you know, <laughs> it's going well. And I think what it made me think that, that this, that your modern day comedy, it all seems to be aimed at young people, you know. The average age of this audience is, is what is it about? 30 at the most, I would have thought. A few people pushing it up, a few people bringing it down. Mick, am I right? But, um, <laughs> how old are you, Mick? 27. 27? You're boyish. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a nice one. And I thought it's all aimed at young people, you know. So I decided I might do a gig, you know, for, for, for some old people. And someone said to me, it won't work because old people, they don't like swearing and all that sort of stuff, you know. And they, but they, they do. They just don't do it in front of young people. When they're on their own, they fucking... I put my head round the corner at a tea dance once and I was in there going, fucking hell! <laughs> fucking ballot! Just to get it out of the system. <laughs> so I organised a gig and it was in a place called South End on Sea. Do you know it at all? Yeah. You know it, mate. How well? <laughs> no, you just, you've been there, though. It's in Essex anyway, you know you get these stories about jokes about Essex girls and Essex blokes and they say they're all stupid and they just fuck all the time and all that, you know, and it's very, very, it's a horrible regional attitude, you know, and you go there and you think, well, I don't know what they mean, but it still seems unfair. <laughs> I think it's unfair. They do say that no matter where you are in the world, if you want to hear the sound of the sea at South End, all you have to do is hold a shell suit up to your ear. <laughs> So it was, uh, it was uh, this old people's home in, in South End on Sea, right, July. It was fucking hot. So hot, some of the old age pensioners had unbuttoned their overcoats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hot, isn't it? <laughs> and a bit sexy, I think. <laughs> 
So, I was all set to go on. First of all, the compere went on. Now, the compere was actually a member of the old people's home, right? And he did about 25 minutes, you know, 23 of which was him getting to the microphone. <laughs> and then he did a bit, and he, he was going all right, and he said, oh, we're going to have a, a chap on now. He said he's going to tell you a few jokes and stuff. He said, but first of all, he said, I'd like you all to join me in the club song, All Young People Are Cunts. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to have trouble here. I sensed. <laughs> you know, you pick up on things. I sensed, I sensed trouble. And they were the worst fucking audience. I, I, were you there? No, they were the worst. <laughs> they were the worst audience. <laughs> I've never known a, a crowd like them. They were terrible. They, they wouldn't respond to me not knock joke until I'd showed them some proper form of identification. <laughs> Right? I said, why did the chicken cross the road? This old bloke said, I wish I could afford fucking chicken, you old young bastard. <laughs> now, to be honest, I don't, I don't mind a bit, a bit of heckling nowadays, you know. You can have, have a bit of a chat, have a bit of a laugh, and it doesn't bother me, right? When I first started, it used to really, you know, used to, I used to be scared. The first gig I ever did, I stood in the wings, I was terrified, you know, I was trembling. I thought, if anyone heckles tonight, I'll, I'll fucking explode, right? <laughs> And I went out and I did two or three jokes and I was a bit nervous. Crow could see it wasn't going well. And this bloke at the back showed to get off your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was frightened to look up. I just thought it was going to be some really big, nasty, aggressive bloke going to give me a fucking hard time. And I was wrong. In fact, it was a very caring, considerate bloke who was pointing out the fact that I was standing on my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> Stage. I left the stage at the old people's home. I was, I was a wreck. I'd, I'd, I'd had a hard time and I felt bad. I was a broken man. And there was a nurse there. Her job was to look after the old people, give them regular medicals. And she was there in case it was an emergency, you know. And she took me into a little room and, uh, you know, gave me a cup of tea. And she was very nice. I, I quite fancied her, I'll, I'll be honest with you. But I thought, I, I don't think I could get romantically involved with someone when I know they spend some of their afternoons with the fingers up old age pensioners' bottoms. You know? <laughs> It wasn't a job, she's just a bit of a practical joker. <laughs> she used to go up to him in the tea queue, you know, well, hey, get, get off! Get off, get off! <laughs> she thought it was funny, I, was, I wasn't so sure. <laughs> I must tell you this, I, I, I found this book, right, uh, it's called An A to Z of Human Sexuality, right? And I thought, well, you know, I'll have a look up W and, you know, see what's there. <laughs> And there's a whole section, right, on, on, on masturbation, right? And, and he said there's a lot of myths about masturbation, a lot of rubbish talked about it. You know, this stuff affects your eyesight and all that, it's all rubbish. I didn't read it all, I'll get this like, double. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it said this, and I'm not making this up, this was in the book, right? It said, many teenage boys, it said, <laughs> might be asking some questions later on, we'll see. <laughs> many teenage boys, it said, for added stimulation, whilst masturbating, insert a finger in their bottom. <laughs> Nobody told me. <laughs> Nobody fucking told me. I said years, years, and nobody told me. Have you heard of this, Mick? I'm not suggesting, I'm not suggesting for a second that you, but have you heard of this? It's, it's I've never, you know, if I went on, 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 the, on the bus or on the train and I saw a bloke, right, and I noticed the fingernails on his left hand were cut short. <laughs> to make conversation, I'd say, ah, guitarist, eh, you know. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> now I say... <laughs> Nobody told me. <laughs> Nobody... You probably should have a show of hands here. Right? Your left hands would, would prove it, I would thought. And his genetic fingerprint here. And now he's... Well, I thought, fingers up the arse, I thought. <laughs> fingers up the arse. <laughs> and, and then I thought, well, you know, nothing ventured. Right, so... <laughs> I had a go. I did. I, well, I did. I had a go. I'm not uh, ashamed to say that. There are people in here thinking, oh, he's gone too far. But I did. I tried it. <laughs> and, you know, don't knock it till you've, you've tried it. I know it's... <laughs> It's all right, though, you know, it's nothing, you know, morally wrong, you know, nobody got hurt, you know. It made me jump a bit at first, but... <laughs> I just, I just snagged on a nail, you know. <laughs> nothing a matchbox couldn't. 
couldn't sort that. <laughs> You know, it's not, I don't think it's a bad thing you know, at all. You know, some people, you know, they don't want to talk about stuff like this, and I think it should be, you know, swept under the carpet you know, when it's dried and gone flaky. <laughs> not <when> it... <laughs> I think we should be open about it. I had a go, and it's fucking great. That's what I say. <laughs> it's fucking great, me. <laughs> okay, you know, you don't have to, but I, I enjoyed it. There are certain problems you don't know quite how to sit. Is one thing, right? <laughs> you have to take your watch off, right? So... <laughs> but. <laughs> You, you know, you know that, you know that bit when, when you sort of throw your head back. You know, so, oh. <laughs> some people do apparently. You know. <laughs> well, y y you're inclined to topple when you, you know, you can, <laughs> you're right over, you know. But it, I, re I, I enjoyed it. I'll be quite honest with you. And um, I, uh, my heart started thumping, you know, with excitement. And I thought, well, I'll stop now, you know, because. Uh, if you're going to die of a heart attack, this is not how you want to be discovered. <laughs> it's true. I think of your poor family, you know. Mom, Frank's dead. <laughs> oh, no, that would be terrible. Think of your... Oh, dear. Your mum on the phone saying, saying to your brothers, the ambulance is here in two minutes. You better get it out one way or another. <laughs> Let's break it, Mum. Fuck it. Oh, that would be a horrible domestic scene. That would be... And the thing is about this book, it wasn't written by one person, it's written by a committee of about eight people wrote this book, right? I'd love to have been at the fucking committee meeting <laughs> when one bloke said, well, there's a section on masturbation finished, I think we've covered everything, and one bloke said, oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, we forgot, forgot the old bloody finger up the arse job. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Nothing, I'll, I'll see you later on. <laughs> There was other stuff in the book. I don't used to think that was it. It was, it was quite, quite informative. And it said, you know, sometimes you start talking about stuff like this and you see people get a bit tense, you know. And uh, apparently we're all quite sexually inhibited, you know, basically underneath. And, and, and this, in this book, they blame people's parents. Right. Now, um, have we got any parents in the audience tonight? Any, any parents? You, you parents? No? No, I'm not going to... You, mate. You, parent? No. I think he's going to give me the old, not as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't. Bless you for that. No fucking parents in the audience. You are. You are. What was your name, sorry? No, you, yeah. Oh, Steph. Steph. Uh, how, how old are your kids? You got one or several? Three. Three. How old, how old are they, Steph? Um, 19, 16 and 13. 19, 16 and 13, right. Well, <laughs> now... This book, I'll tell you what this book says, think back to when they were kids, because this book said that what parents should do, right, in order that their kids are brought up, uh, you know, being, thinking that the body is a perfectly normal thing, is parents should walk around the house naked, right? <laughs> Not, I mean, inside the house, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be fucking climbing privy step, obviously. <laughs> But, you know, when, when they were, when they were, if you remember when they were smaller, you know, I mean, I mean don't feel you have to answer this, but did, did you walk around, you know? You did? Where do you live? <laughs> no. and, and that, was a, that was a positive decision that they, uh, you know, you bring them up with a, a broad-minded, was that? Yeah. Yeah, I am... Um, I think it's a, it's a good thing. That siren is the police coming for you, Steph. <laughs> It's a good thing, um, you know, in, in principle. What would put me off is I don't want to be walking around the house naked and there's some kid saying, Dad, tell us a story. Get off. Get off. <laughs> that, would, that would put me off. And, and, and more than anything, uh, Steph, the thing is that um, I'll play football sometimes on Sunday mornings, you know, and I don't want to get me knob out in, in front of me mates and, and it's been crying on. <laughs> that looks crap. I, I mean, the thing is, I'm not very, I'm not one of these people who can get naked very easy. Some people, they take the clothes off, they think nothing of it, they don't bother, you know, they're on the beach naked, this, this, that and the other. And um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not knocking you, Steph, in your own home, you know, do what you like. But uh, in front of other people, I'll get very, I'll get very sense. I remember at school, right, I, I mean, I don't know what the girls' changing room was like, you know, because I could only just see through that crap. <laughs> but in the boys, I remember on the first day, there's always one kid who's got hair already, <laughs> who walks around like this. <laughs> and the rest of us are cowering in the corner with our little acorns, you know. <laughs> and 
it was even worse for me because I think I, I know you well enough now to, to, to explain this to you. It's, it's a bit embarrassing, but we're, we know, we're friends, aren't we? <laughs> I've got... How can I put this? I've, I've, I've got this vein, right? <laughs> oh, it's thick. It's fucking thick. <laughs> it's like a fucking power cable. <laughs> in fact, I have tried to kid people that it is a power cable uh, in order to get them to put the white rubber wellingtons on, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's there, and I've got another vein, much thinner than that, but it runs the full length, well, a bit of a marathon. <laughs> oh, shit. It runs the full, the full length, you know, as well. And um, me, you're looking at me in that sort of a, why the fuck are you telling us this? Right? <laughs> but the reason I tell you, the remarkable thing about it, right, is that where these two veins meet is an exact replica of where the M4 joins the A315. <laughs> If you went with an A to Z of London next to my knob, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Right? <laughs> the smell, but you know. So I, <laughs> it's so fucking accurate, right? I was in Hyde Park one day, you know, minding my own business. These, these two women came up to me and said, Excuse me, uh, do you know the way to Chiswick? <laughs> I said, It's your lucky day. <laughs> So, so this copper, he said, um, <laughs> he said, look, mate, he said, even if I accept that explanation, he said, that doesn't really explain why you were masturbating. <laughs> I said, well, the thing is, officer, is that if I don't get it fully erect, I lose the junction with Gold Hawk Road. <laughs> that. He thought, oh, thank God he didn't ask about the finger, but you know. <laughs> so I thought, well, he's very broad-minded, understanding for a cop, you know, community policing. It's working, isn't it? And, and then it turned out, a million to one shot, I couldn't believe it. Blow me. D did he say that or did I? I don't remember. <laughs> it, it turned out that he'd got a vein, eh, which completely encircled his, his, his anus, right? <laughs> Which was an exact replica of the M25 London Orbital. I thought <laughs> it had the service stations and everything. It was all there. <laughs> well, I thought he was telling me to make conversation, you know, and, but, but then it, it turned out that um, he pointed out that the M4 joins the M25 at Junction 4A. <laughs> Night. Anyway, now, <laughs> human relationships, eh? They're, they're a void of discovery, aren't they? <laughs> they are, actually. I, I, met this, um, I met this woman, right, and um, we, we had a bit of a snog, right? Nothing else, but it didn't get any further, but it was nice, you know. And, and we were snogging, and, and uh, she put her tongue in my ear, right, and sort of wiggled it about a bit, right? Is that normal? Is that normal behaviour? You, you, you know a lot about life, you know, don't shit your trousers, etc. <laughs> is that normal? Do you, would you, I don't know if you'd do it, but oh, it is normal. I'd, see, I'd never, I'd never come across it before. It was, I liked it, you know. It made me a bit self-conscious, actually, because um, I'm a bit waxy. <laughs> no, I am. And, and when she drew back, she was still chewing, you know. <laughs> oh, I felt bad about it. Don't she, she said, oh, you're fucking waxy, you know. Nailed quite what she said, which is strange because my hearing had improved 100%. <laughs> she said, I'm, you're fucking, well, I said, I'm, I said, I'm ever so, I'm really sorry. I said, but look, I said, don't, don't spit it out. Here's five quid, go and lick me car. It was a joke. <laughs> it's a fucking joke. She didn't take it, she didn't take it well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, nowadays, a bit, you've got to take, you know, a job where you can. What do you do for a living, if you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm a public. You're a? Publican. Uh, you're a pub? <laughs> Told you out on me. <laughs> Sorry, I... What did you say? I'm a publican. Oh, a publican. Sorry. Really? Fuck me, don't get no more trouble in your pub, do you? <laughs> Mixed pub, fuck it. Where's your pub then? We might come in and... <laughs> don't tell him. <laughs> Wife's just don't fucking tell him. <laughs> Don't tell him and don't shit your trousers, all right? <laughs> Stick with those two things, Mick, and you'll be all right. You're quite young for a publican, aren't you? I always imagine them like old, you know, fat blokes with uh, 
No. No. It's changing. It is changing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you've got a little bit of speech on behalf of the public. <laughs> yeah, they're not all in that fucking skin. I'm just getting more confident. Well, yeah. Hey, good for you. He said I'm getting more confident. <laughs> I feel like this has been a bit of therapy for us both. <laughs> um, all right, so, uh, well, I, uh, I, was, I was out of, out of work. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was out of work for three and a half years at one point. I fucking loved it, I have to say. <laughs> I know it's a bit odd to say that, but I did have a good time. I used to, I used to get um, interviews for jobs, which I deliberately failed. I used to sit in job interviews like this. <laughs> You got any women working here? <laughs> what do they wear? It's fucking foolproof, right? <laughs> Virtually foolproof. I've got a job as a publican. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a job. It's a job. <laughs> fucking dead when I get outside. No, is there a... But you, you don't seem the rough type, and that's good. Um, do, you, do you read much, or, you know? You don't read at all. Okay. Price list? <laughs> I read, I read quite, quite a bit. I, I think books, I honestly think books can change your life. I do believe that. I read a book once that changed my life. It's, it's a book called, the, you might know it, The F Plan Diet. Have you ever? <laughs> it's good, that is, you know. It's, it's all about high fibre eating and stuff, because... I am a man who has suffered with constipation all my life. And I mean fucking suffered. <laughs> fucking suffered! Oh, God! I have had a friend with a corkscrew and a foot on each buttock. <laughs> it's true, I once found a doctor three o'clock in the morning demanding a caesarean section. <laughs> Didn't want to fucking know, right? If you're not in Booper nowadays. So I got this book and, and it was very good. I read the blurb on the back and it said, we will teach you how to turn your lead logs into flaky floaters. <laughs> just, just a job for me. Because I, I, just, I just moved in with this woman. The first time I'd actually lived with, with a woman. And you know when you're, you're trying to put on a bit of a, you know, you're trying to impress them a bit. And you, 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 know, you don't want to spend four and a half hours in the toilet and come out, you know, with a vapor trail. You, you know. <laughs> I mean, no, you don't. I mean, I, I don't know. So, you, you, you two, are you a couple? What, what's your name, sorry? Mel and Lee. Mel and Lee, right. Um, how long have you been going out, if you don't mind me asking? Four years. Four years? So you know each other well now. Do you, do you live together? Yeah. yeah. But think, how, how, how long has that been? Two years. Oh, so you, I mean, you, you're at home with each other, and that's nice, right? But think back to the early stages, you know, in your relationship, you know, when you said the things, trying to impress each other, like, you know, clean your teeth, maybe. <laughs> Well, do you remember the days, Lee, when, when you hardly pissed on the floor at all? <laughs> I know it's going back a bit, but do you know? Do you remember those happy days? Mel didn't save some bother, didn't he? A lot, I'm sure a lot of women think that the blokes just piss on the floor on purpose, you know. I'm sure that women think blokes go in the bog and think, right then, um, shall I piss in the bog? Or shall I piss on the floor? <laughs> Fuck it, I'll piss on the floor. <laughs> Might have a bit of a one on the seat. <laughs> Just maybe touch the shoes, but uh, basically on the fucking floor. <laughs> it's not true. Honestly, it's not true. In fact, I'll tell you what, I will tell the women in, in this audience tonight, I'll, I'll reveal why men piss on the floor, right? And Lee's looking at me saying, don't fucking tell. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them, Lee, and this is it, right? Men, after sexual activity, right, be it shared or solo, right? <laughs> They get, they, get a, they get a bit bonged up, right? They do. If you can imagine pissing through a curly whirly. <laughs> no, it's true, it's a terrible thing. You can get out of the shower at nine o'clock in the morning with a hose pipe, two hours, a bit of sexual activity after, and suddenly you've got a multi-directional ornamental fountain head. <laughs> you haven't got a fucking clue which way it's gonna come out. It's like a roulette wheel, right? <laughs> Fuck, sometimes you stand by the bog like this, have a piss, it comes out there, like <laughs> 90 degrees. I know, because I always keep a protractor in, in the bog. <laughs> 90 degrees again, love. <laughs> 
it's amazing what you, you end up standing side on to the bottle. Like, were they just going to <laughs> And then suddenly, some comes out there, right? <laughs> and you've got twin jets, right? <laughs> just close enough together for you to think, oh, I might get both of these in. <laughs> you fucking won't, right? You won't. You just won't. You'll get the lip on both sides, you won't get them both in. And they're just coming enough to tempt me. If they was this far apart, you'd think, fuck it, I'll get the thick one in, you know, and sod the wall back. <laughs> They always tell me, that you don't know which way it's going to come out. Keep it off the floor. I'm happy if I can keep it off my fucking eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the twin jets will suddenly join together. They'll plait into one twisty jet of piss. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> As you know, in bright sunshine, that can be quite beautiful. <laughs> I was talking about books. I read a book. I tell you, an amazing thing, and it's made me think about about things differently. I'll tell you, it's a, it's a book. It's called A Brief History of Time. Has anyone? Have you read that? You've read it, mate. It's fucking complicated. It's by a bloke called Professor Stephen Hawking, right? Who was a very uh, physically disabled bloke. He's got a voice box and all that sort of stuff. But, but the fucking the brainiest bloke in the world probably is at Cambridge, and he's a professor, and you know, he knows it all, right? <laughs> he's, he's a real fucking brain, right? And he wrote this book, and it explains everything about, about the world, you know. It's a science book, basically. Now, I haven't had a science book in my house since I was at school, right? And, and even then, it wasn't mine, it belonged to the school. You used to get all the names of the kids in the front who'd had it before you, you know. And you used to think, what, what a common surname is a cunt, seems to be. <laughs> now, I wasn't a great scholar at school, I have to admit. I, uh, my claim to fame at school, what I was known for, was I was the kid who started the pile-ups, right? <laughs> now, I don't know if you remember these, a very complicated old English game, but I think I can just about explain the basic rules. One kid lies face down <laughs> on the playground, right? <laughs> and about 50 other kids pile up on top of him, right? <laughs> you lie there, you know, till your ears start bleeding. <laughs> and then you say, well, you know, get up and say, well, I enjoyed that. I'll see you, I'll see you next playtime, and maybe we'll do it again, right? <laughs> I started that. I started. Oh, I used to was the kid on the bottom when we faced in the fucking room. And the things that go through your mind when you're lying there being squashed, eh? looking at the kid next to you and thinking, shouldn't his rib cage be on the inside of his blade? <laughs> or you think things like, I, I hope that frog's all right in my pocket. <laughs> or you think things like, thank God, Fatty Johnson died of heart trouble in the second year. <laughs> But what I never thought was, why the fuck do I start the pile-up? So it's a shit thing to do, right? I went to the next school, and all they played there was Kiss Chase. Kiss Chase, Kiss Chase, Kiss Chase. And it was a boys' school, people talk, you know. <laughs> so I started pencil-shaped pencil case up the arse chase. Right? <laughs> did they run? They fucking did, I'm telling you. They'd just see the sun glinting on that circular zip on the top. <laughs> The rattle of a 2HB and a sharp neck. They <laughs> shot off. They shot off. Not only that, but our school won the school relays race five years on the trotter. Because <laughs> the kids would see him coming and think, is that a baton? Is that no, it's a fucking pencil case. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't a great scholar. I, I lived in a place called Smedic, right? <clears throat> and it's lovely this time of the year. It's, no, it is. It's, it's, it's a good place, Smith, but education wasn't a big deal when I was a kid. It was the sort of place where if anyone got CSE geography, they got their picture in the local paper, you know, <laughs> holding a map of the world, you know. <laughs> and the headline would say something like, Local Boffin Scoops CSE Glory. <laughs> Is that with, with the, the pictures in local papers? Uh, the, the picture has to tell the whole fucking story because I sort of presume the people who read local papers probably can't read, right? <laughs> so, well, for example, there was a bloke in Smedic, I remember, who retired from this tube factory that he worked at, right? So the picture of him was out, him outside the factory holding a tube in one hand and with the other hand going. <laughs> Behind him was all his mates in overalls going. <laughs> One bloke in a suit with a carriage clock going. <laughs> no need to read the fucking story at all. But the best one, it appeared in this, our local paper was called the Smedic Telephone, right? Fuck knows why, right? 
They must have had a meeting um, one day and thought, what are we going to call this then? It's, it's some form of communication. What is it? Is it, is it, is it a telephone? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, I'll fucking do, anyway. So they called it that, it's a medic telephone. I remember I discussed this in, in a, at a gig at Birmingham Town Hall one night, and I said, I don't know what it was called that. And, and uh, what was it called, this medic telephone? A bloke in the audience said, uh, uh, it's because it was uh, from Smedic, mate. <laughs> Right. So anyway, this is the pitch. This was the story. My favourite ever local uh, local paper story. It was a front page news in the Smedic Telephone. And what it said was this: It said a woman from Cradley Heath, right, which is a nearby area, right. That Cra a woman from Cradley Heath had had Martians land in her front garden, right. And the picture was her pointing at the spot where they'd landed and going. <laughs> The story was even better than the picture. I couldn't fucking believe it. She said, she said, I was in my back kitchen, you know, washing up, and I said, this spaceship land on, on the lawn, and I thought, who are? <laughs> she said, so I went up, and I knocked on the door, right? Now, obviously, as you would, if a spaceship landed in your fucking garden. And these little green, she said, little green men looked out, you know, and said, what, what do you want, right? <laughs> she said, you know, what are you doing on my fucking lawn here? <laughs> And the woman, she said that they understood every word that she said, you know, which if you've ever met anyone from Cradley, you know what a fucking achievement that is. <laughs> but it went on, and it was all quotes, you know, it's stuff she'd said to the reporter. She said that she took them in the house and gave them all mince pies, right? I mean, it wasn't Christmas, but, you know, they went to fucking now, right? <laughs> But the last sentence of this, honestly, this article, and I swear you can look up the back issues of the Smedic Telephone and I'll put any money on it, it's there. The last sentence of this article I will remember if I live to be a hundred, word for word, and this is what it said. She watched as the alien craft rose into the morning sky and disappeared towards Dudley. <laughs> Explains a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> anyway, Stephen Hawking, apparently one night he spent about five or six hours looking at the stars, the planets, the movements of the planets, the sky in general, thinking to himself, how the fuck am I going to get back in that wheelchair? <laughs> he, he did it. And, and he wrote this book, right? And uh, this book that he wrote, right, it, 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 as I say, it explains the world now it goes on. And it says that at one time the universe wasn't separate planets and stars, it was all joined together, right? And he says that the universe used to be one sort of shapeless lump just drifting aimlessly in open space. Right. If you've ever seen John Barnes play for England, John... <laughs> oh, you're horrible for clapping that. Anyway, apparently there was a thing called the Big Bang Theory and the whole thing exploded, you know, nobody knows why, but apparently the West Midlands police kicked the shit out of three blokes from Coventry just in case. <laughs> so, this is what happened, right? And the question he asks is this, you know, it, this, is, this is the biggest question known to, known to humanity. What came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Now, I happen to know it was the egg, right? Because chickens, they fucking never come first, right? <laughs> <laughs> They'll go all night, chickens. It's me, it's always fucking me who eventually says, I'm sorry, I can't, sorry, I couldn't, it's always me. Chickens, fucking okay, hell. People going, oh no. <laughs> Say that in Bristol, gonna fucking stand innovation. <laughs> People say, you fuck them chickens, Fran. <laughs> we know, mate. <laughs> we haven't got any country folk in tonight. Have we anyone who grew up in the, in the countryside at all? Yeah. yeah. Wait, oh, two. You. <laughs> you. Where, where, where did, sorry, what's your name? Barbara. Barbara, where, where did you grow up, Barbara? Uh, Ireland. In Ireland, in the countryside there. <laughs> Just two of you in, in the one village. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really... Sorry? So it was a little tiny village. You was, in a, was you in a cottage and all that sort of stuff? No. No, but it was not many people about. Do you find that the people... Because I grew up in the city, I guess most of us here. Do you find that people from the city don't really understand country people and country ways? Do you not find that? I'll, I'll, I'll sort of... I find that most of the people from the city I know don't even speak to their relatives, you know, so the idea of fucking them is just completely <laughs> alien. <laughs> I also, I also, I'm not suggesting for a sec, I also, uh, I find that city people, they don't trust anyone who likes the smell of shit. It worries them. <laughs> because even dogs don't like it. They'll get down there, but it's a sense of duty, you know. It's not a smile, that's a grimace, that. 
I'm not happy. Country people fucking love the smell of shit. That's great. I was walking through a field with this sort of farmer type bloke, I remember once, and suddenly there was an incredibly strong smell of horse shit and a big broad grin came on his face. And then he put his knob away and the smell of horse shit disappeared. <laughs> Oh, that's nice, I wonder. <laughs> and country, I don't know if this applies to you, but a lot of country people have got, they've got horror stories about city people and how, you know, manipulative and, and how, how crafty they are. Like they always thought stuff about how some city person taught their granddad into swapping his farm for a torch. Yeah. <laughs> Very sad. But I'll tell you what I like, and this is true, I, I, I love those old, was there any, where, whereabouts did you come from? What's the name of the, the village? Bally? Bal Bal yeah. It's lovely there, isn't it? Uh, was there any sort of sayings around there? You know, those country sort of sayings that you get? <laughs> don't speak to comedians. <laughs> or don't shit yourself. Don't stop. You know, a bit of country wisdom. It's a lot of them, you know. And like, you know that one, uh, if the cattle are lying down, have sex with them. That one. <laughs> That, isn't it? You know, because a city person would have, you know, come up with some complicated idea. I thought that was good. And also, that you have this thing, um, teaching your grandmother to sock eggs. They say. <laughs> now, I thought, right, the country people socked eggs. You know, watching the telly. You know, one man and his dog, Emma Dale Farm. <laughs> Bloody, I like these eggs, man. They get more out. <laughs> no, they suck them straight out the chickens' asses. Right? <laughs> you see them running around the farm, saying, "Come on." <laughs> I love that. Oh, no, no, Jacob, it, it don't work with pigs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Professor Stephen Hawking, he says, look, this is, where do we come from? That's what he asked. I don't mean, like, Bally Blue. I mean, you know, where do we come from in, in, in the big world? And he said, we've got two choices, right? We've got, we've got creation, like God made us, right? Or we've got evolution, right? We used to be just shit and we got a bit better, you know? <laughs> like that, right? <coughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> now, this is, this is the theory. Now, um, what, what, what do we think here? What, what do you think, Leo? you think God made us or do you think evolution? What, what's your vote? You think God? I'll go with God. You go with God. Because he's got lightning, Darwin's got fuck all. You know. <laughs> Same thing. What about you, Mick? I suppose if God tried to make you, you'd do him over. Am I right? <laughs> Nobody fucking makes me. Come on, then. <laughs> now, what do you think? Do you think God, Mick, or, or evolution? You think God as well? Oh, we've got a... It is Sunday, I suppose, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm with you. I'm with, I'm, with the, uh, I'm with the God Squad. I don't think, you know, that by accident you could create a race of creatures so intelligent and so creative that they could make something like, you know, the Abdominizer, for example. <laughs> With its double-handled rock in motion. <laughs> that couldn't have just fucking happened, could it? It's, it's got a, there's a plan there, obviously. <laughs> and people say to me, they say, but Frank, you can't believe that stuff, the Bible, you know, Adam and Eve and all that. And I think, well, why not? Adam and Eve, let's look at what they did, you know. They spoke to a snake, right? And, and, and then they went scrumping, right? <laughs> and then they suddenly realised they were naked, right? Now, yeah, fuck, we've all had nights like that, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> evolution, on the other hand, I think it's much more far-fetched. The only case you don't understand the evolution thing, right? This is basically how it works. If, for, for example, this theatre filled up with piss all of a sudden, say, <laughs> right? You'd be all right up there, wouldn't you? <laughs> But what would happen is most of us would drown, but a few of us, you know, the strong ones, right, like yourself, Mick, you know, well, you'd elbow your way, you know, drop the nut on a few drowning folk, <laughs> and make your way to the top, you know, maybe tip, 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 tip the girl, I don't know, but you'd, you'd, you'd get up there anyway, and you'd survive, you'd, you'd learn to breathe, you'd get a bit yellow and crinkle, but you'd be all right, right? Because <laughs> you'd be one of the stronger ones, and then you'd want to start having sex, you know, perhaps, say, maybe it might give it ten minutes, right? <laughs> So then you'd start producing kids, Mick, and they'd grow up in that environment, and they'd be, you know, your kids, and they'd, they'd be born, like, with little gills, you know. But thank heaven for little... With little gills, they don't. <laughs> and fins, because they, they, they're getting used to the environment, you know. And then their kids would have big gills, you know. And there'd be lots of... Your kids would be walking around, grandkids, saying, look at the fucking gills on that, you know. And, <laughs> and you'd build a new race, right? So the theory of evolution is that every generation is an improvement on the last generation, right? Now, anyone who's ever listened to a Julian Lennon album will know that that's bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against the idea that we come from the apes and stuff. That's fine by me. Some of you might have read, in fact, that I am, in fact, the vice president of the Save the Baboon organisation, you know. And incidentally, we're having a red arse day next <laughs> month. So, <laughs> do wear one. Okay, no, it's all good. Solidarity. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I just I can't believe it. And I'll tell you what, what really gets me about evolution, what, what disproves it, and that, that is the Eskimo. Right? Now, if evolution works, if you adapt to your environment, if you're constantly improving, why is the Eskimo not white? Right? And I don't mean white like, you know, pinky, flabby, Caucasian like me. I mean proper fucking white, right? <laughs> Everything else that lives where he lives is white, right? <laughs> you've got the Arctic fox, the snowy owl, the baby seal, the polar bear, they're all fucking white. And then you've got the Eskimo, who's fucking orange, right? <laughs> He's supposed to hunt these in snow, right? <laughs> what fucking chance has he got? The Eskimo is walking along hunting like this. <laughs> Polar bear standing there. <laughs> look at this twat. Eh? He, can't, he, can't, he can't fucking see us. He can't fucking see us. Look, 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 look. He can't fucking see us. He's got no chance at all, the Eskimo. He ends up fishing in a hole in the ice for about eight hours, right? And the next eight hours he spends trying to find his fucking house again, you know. <laughs> Down here somewhere, wasn't he? Oh, oh stood on a baby seal there. Oh, shit, I've got to that. Oh. <laughs> And baby seals, brilliant advert for evolution, baby seals. If evolution works, why haven't the baby seals developed really hard heads? <laughs> oh, come on. Even Kevin Keegan, right? <laughs> Do you remember when Kevin Keegan fell asleep in his Range Rover? Someone hit him on the head with a fucking baseball bat, you know. They're obviously driving past, oh, there's Kevin Keegan. Have we got a baseball bat in the boot? Come on. And they went in there, right? Even Kevin Keegan used his natural defence system, you know. We used to take the piss out of that 70s springy perm, eh? <laughs> Spent his fucking life that night, though. Oh, yes. It's Kevin Keegan. Doing. <laughs> hey, speaking of air stars, I've got to tell you about this one. This, this mate of mine, right, he, he told me, right, that apparently there is a new sexual practice, right? Now you could hear a fucking pin drop, couldn't you? <laughs> a new sexual practice, right, called heading, right? Bit of a snigger. Might come back to you on that one, right? <laughs> and apparently, and this is what he, he swore this was true, apparently, by a, ser a series of muscular contractions and breathing exercises, it is possible to get your head up your partner's bottom. <laughs> I said, oh, no, I said, I said, I can't. I said, anyone who's ever tried putting on a tight-fitting polo neck jumper one now, that's not good. <laughs> But he insisted, and then he used two little words which made me believe him. Two tiny words which will make me believe any fucking story, no matter how far-fetched. He said to me, in America... <laughs> Said, I believe fucking anything if it's got in America in it somewhere. People say to me, Oh, Frank was a bloke who accidentally swallowed his parents. Bollocks. In America. Oh, what happened? <laughs> so it's true, it swears, but apparently it is true. Like heading exists, right? I said to him, I said, I just find it hard that people can, you know, they can do it. And he said, Not the whole head. He said, Just down to about there, you know. <laughs> I thought, Oh, that'd be all right then, obviously. <laughs> about there. Apparently the motto, he tells me, is if you can't hear the stereo, you're in too far. <laughs> and I thought, well, what will people think of next? It amazes me. I mean, last year it was fisting, now it's heading. Next year it'll be fucking transit vanning, right? <laughs> Some bloke saying to his mate, oh, not the whole van, you know, just, just down to the sliding doors. <laughs> Start, right? Was, was, was a bloke sitting up in bed there and, and his partner, you know, was, was, was lying asleep and the bloke was thinking, uh... <laughs> Where's that fucking brill cream? <laughs> I, I don't believe that. I just couldn't. I mean, I'm, I regard myself as a fairly passionate person, you know, and I've got to get carried away sometimes. I have never, I cannot remember any situation, sexual situation, what I've thought to myself, oh, God, this is really, oh, really, what I really want to do now is stick my head. I never thought that. <laughs> never thought that, right? I just, uh, it must have been an accident, hadn't it? There must have been, like, a pantomime horse in a car crash, and it just fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what it got me thinking was, um, what do you say in and around the act? 
you know, because you want to make it casual, you know, and lie back. But say you've just done it to someone, when, when, you, when, when you emerge, <laughs> what do you say, right, to break the ice, you know, that, that bit when you say, oh, oh, I enjoyed that. <laughs> you haven't got any cotton buds. Have you? <laughs> and when you're being done, what do you say then? You know, that moment when you, when you say, right, go, go on, go, oh, tickles. <laughs> go, go. Oh, you're in. Oh, oh, that's good. Right, just, I'll tell you what, just try, try standing up. <laughs> well, hey! Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that hat? <laughs> hey. hey, hey, let's go down the pub like this, shall we? <laughs> I said, I said let, let's get out. You're in too far. <laughs> it's true, it's all true. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against sexual experimentation. I think it's a very good thing. It's good for, you know, healthy for relationships. I've, se I've watched these uh, lot of videos out now, you know, your sort of lover's guide and your this, that and the other. And I think they're very good. I don't know if you, have, have you anyone here seen one of those instruction videos? Lee, you sort of went, no, fuck it. <laughs> have you seen any, Lee? Not with me, you haven't. No, was. <laughs> Mel said, not with me, you haven't. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, no, it's amazing. Coincidence, no one here. They've sold fucking millions, you know. <laughs> Video shops have been flooded, you know. You think people would wait they got home, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched one, I'll own up. I did watch one. I thought it was very good. If there's anyone here, and obviously I wouldn't ask you this, but if there's anyone here who's having sort of sexual problems, you're getting a bit bored in your sex life, I'd recommend the worth of you. And I'm, I'm judging. From a bit from um, a guesswork, I didn't actually have the sound turned up when I watched it. Because I think if you're going to watch a video like that on your own, you know, and someone comes home early from work, you want to hear the key in the fucking door. <laughs> Give me a chance, you know, get the video under the settee, you know, get the, uh, get the liver back in the fridge. All, all that. <laughs> thing is, I don't want to kid you that I'm some sort of super stud because if ever I meet anyone who's very sort of sexual, experimental and all that sort of thing, I often get a bit intimidated and a bit scared, you know. I, uh, I, I met this woman and uh, we, we went back to my flat, you know, and uh, suddenly I thought we were just going to do the like, ordinary things that people do. She said, look, this is what I want you to do, Frank. She just took over, you know, bossy. <laughs> she said, I want you to cover my breasts with honey and then lick it off. And I thought, well, I don't think I, don't think I want to. I don't want to do that. I, the fact, the fact is, I, I only had lemon curd. <laughs> if you put it on nipples, it looks like acne. <laughs> I couldn't have licked it for fifty quid. I couldn't. I wanted to join it. I fucking couldn't. I said I don't want to do that. Can't we just do ordinary thing? And she got quite stroppy with me, Lee. She turned. She said. Um, she said, you're fucking boring, you are, she said. She said, I've got just a thing for you. And she reached into this carrier bag, took out some rolled up newspaper, opened it up, and it was a dozen oysters, right? And she said, she said, you eat 12 of these, you'll be able to satisfy me all night, right? Well, I'd never tried them before. Have you ever tried them, Mick? Have you tried oysters? Well, they are fucking horrible, right? <laughs> they are disgusting. I tried one, one I tried, and I thought, 12 of these, I'll be able to satisfy you all night. Well, that's probably true, because... After 12 of these, oral sex is going to be a piece of piss, I tell you. <laughs> no point in intended. <laughs> I thought eat 12 of these, oral sex would be like the fucking sweet trolley turning up. <laughs> oh, there, there, fucking oysters. Honestly, it's like licking phlegm off a tortoise. <laughs> Speaking, speaking, of, uh, speaking of oral sex, there was, there was a section on this video called The Blowjob, right? And I thought, well, I'll watch this, you know. But it's not, it's not how to do it or anything. It's, it's quite a highbrow thing. It's, 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 it's called the political analysis of The Blowjob. And it, and it looks at it sort of in its social context, you know. Interesting. And um, what it said was this. It said that um, it said nowadays, um, in the times of equality and all that, the blokes have got very um, confused about how to ask for a blowjob. They don't know quite what to say. They don't want to offend, you know, the, the woman or make them think that, you know, they're using them in any way or there's an imbalance of power in the relationship. And, you know, gone are the days when blokes would say, Wait, blowjob, that's gone now. <laughs> and, you know, it's a 
job that he's done, obviously. <laughs> but th this is what happened. And he said a lot of men there are so worried about it, they don't actually ask for a blowjob at all. They just start sort of... <laughs> sort of moving up in the bed. <laughs> Board, you know. Perhaps that's why they call it the headboard. Oh, no. <laughs> what are they hoping for, these blokes? They think the woman's going to sort of accidentally turn into it, you know. I just, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's in now. <laughs> that's not going to fucking happen. I'm so worried about offending the woman I'm with, I end up sitting on the pillow going. <laughs> off it's a waste of time <laughs> and not only that apparently you've got to be careful what you say after a blowjob you've got to make it sure that you haven't feel that you've exploited this person in any way you're still a caring loving equal relationship you've got to be careful about that and it suggests some of the things that people say you know after a blowjob apparently some blokes they have a blowjob and then they say uh, thank you <laughs> Rubbish, isn't it? Surely that's woefully inadequate, isn't it? I'll say thank you if somebody holds the fucking door open. <laughs> yeah, that to a blow job, for goodness sake. It said very trendy blokes who are very confident, you know, and, full, and, and outgoing will say, say to a woman afterwards, um, hey, great blow job. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not say that. For a start-up, it suggests that it's possible to have a blowjob that isn't great, right? <laughs> I can't fucking believe that, I'm sorry. I think they're all fantastic, right? The odd flesh wound doesn't bother me, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, if somebody saved me from drowning, I wouldn't say, hey, great piece of life saving there. <laughs> Might seem odd to you to compare um, getting a blowjob and being safe from drowning, but uh, I, I don't know what would make me more grateful. <laughs> I do know. I do know if I ever meet anyone who saves me from drowning and then... <laughs> I will stay with that person for the rest of my life. Imagine being out on the wild ocean, you've lost control, you think it's all over. You go, oh, God, help me! Help us all, thank you, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, go on. Go on! That would be, oh, that would be heaven, wouldn't it? It really would be heaven. So what it suggests, anyway, its final conclusion is after a bloke job, the best, the best thing after you've had a bloke job, the bloke can say is... Um, Quite simply, I love you. <laughs> now, I like the sentiment of that, and I was a sweet thing, but uh, what would worry me, um, and I'm sure this would happen eventually, is that the woman would say, well, and I love you. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> I met a woman and she said, Frank, you've got this all wrong, you're making a big fuss about nothing. You, you just you misunderstand. She said, I don't give you a blowjob, you don't receive a blowjob, we share a blowjob. <laughs> a blowjob is a physical joining together of two people. It's more than physical, it's spiritual. It's a joining together, a bonding, a joined act of love. Oh, well, she actually said, oh, but, but, you know, <laughs> I could pick out the odd word and I'll yeah, together. There's a lot of interesting things on this video. It, it's got a, a bit on it called, um, it's called a survey of human sexuality, right? I thought this is interesting. And they've in interviewed all these British people and asked them various questions. And there's all sorts of statistics. One of the things, it says that 8% uh, of British women, right, that's 8 in every 100, right, have had sex with 25 men. Yeah. And it, it's got a picture of these 25 men, right? <laughs> Looking fucking pleased with themselves. <laughs> sort of a team shot, you yeah. know. <laughs> Apparently it was a community program thing, but again, nobody fucking told me, right? <laughs> but at the end of the video, this is the scary bit, right? It, it, the, suddenly the screen goes, goes black, and, and this voice says, Human sexuality is the most mysterious thing known to humanity. I thought, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> And then a quote comes on the screen from some book I've never read, some sort of heavy <coughs> philosophical thing, and it says, dogs have sex in the street. It's only conscience and civilization that stop us from doing the same thing. <laughs> it's the fucking sharp teeth that puts me off. <laughs> <laughs> they, can, they, can they can turn, you know, that's that. 
The ones with a with long torso, they can get round you like this. <laughs> No, well, no, I know what they. I know what they meant, obviously, because um, I, 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 it reminded me. Actually, I was um, I was in Solly Hall, which is quite a, a, a posh, a posh bit of, uh, of Birmingham, and uh, I was walking through there. It's a sort of place, you know, you keep a sheet of newspaper under the cuckoo clock, you know. So <laughs> very posh. I, w I was walking through through Solly Hall, and, and I saw this this uh, big black mongrel dog, big ragged, rough-looking thing, and it was having sex with this poodle. Right? Very clipped, very clean dog, the poodle. And, uh, and the dog was really getting in there, right? And, and these two people were there hitting the, the, the mongrel dog with, with brooms, going, get, get off. <laughs> get, 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 get off, right? <laughs> and this dog was, was looking around at him like this. <laughs> he said, uh, you're fucking hurting me, you know. <laughs> You're going to break my back with that fucking brush. <laughs> but I can't stop. <laughs> and you know, we've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> Not the poodle, I mean, you know, that... that. <laughs> but I, I have to say, I don't like to hear uh, human beings compared uh, to dogs, because uh, dogs are disgusting, really. I mean, I've got one. And, you know, he licks his own knob. <laughs> now, I know they all do, you know, I know they all do. Doesn't make it right, does it? <laughs> And I watch him, it makes me feel sick, you know, it's so, so fucking salty. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, look, you've, been a, you've been a splendid audience, though. I've had a great time, thank you very much, and good night! I think I was milking it, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, the applause. <laughs> no, I just waited because one night people were cheering and, and stuff. Not here, but another place I played. And I came back on and I got to about here and, and they stopped. <laughs> and there's people sort of putting their coats on and stuff, you know. And one woman said, oh, look, look he's come back, look. <laughs> and I had, to, I had to pretend that I went this way home. <laughs> Oh, I felt like a prat. <laughs> Look, I um, I must say this. I stayed at a, at a hotel, right? This is this is a tr true story, actually. I stayed at, at a hotel in Glasgow, right? It's the one that's sort of by the railway station. I don't, I don't know what it's called there, but they got this thing called the House Video, right? Now I don't know if you've ever looked at a hotel house video, but uh, what what happens is this: a film comes on. And you watch it, you know, watch the film, and then after four minutes, the picture starts to crack up, right, and disappear. Unless you press a button, and then it gets charged to your account, you can watch the whole film, right? Fair enough. Now, there's a thing on these videos called the adult selection, right? I think you're with me, right? <laughs> and the same thing happens. Now, I find that four minutes of the adult selection is fucking plenty. <laughs> Four minutes, the sheets are in soak, I'm having a cigarette, I'm happy. <laughs> However, I was in Glasgow, right? Now, it's been a funny old day, I, I, I have to say it was strange. That, uh, what I do when I get to a hotel, I have a shower, I get naked, you know, not in that order. And, and, then, and then I lie naked on the bed and just let myself breathe, you know, let things slot into place. Right? And I was lying there like that, and the chambermaid come in, no knock on the door, nothing, just come in and looked at me and, and said, uh, I could, I could have a lot of fun with one of them. <laughs> I said, uh, go on then. <laughs> Do you know, I never saw that etch a sketch again. <laughs> Just fucked off with it. Right? <laughs> anyway, that night, this is, this, this is what I was going to tell you about. Right? I, was, I was watching, I got the adult selection on, right? Four minutes went by, and I thought, well, I enjoyed both of them, right? <laughs> I realised that five minutes, six minutes, the picture hadn't gone, seven minutes, eight minutes, and I thought, this is very strange. I realised I'd got a faulty hand set, right? Something had gone wrong with it, and in fact, I could watch the adult selection free of charge for eight hours. <laughs> on my own, locked in a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Doesn't that sound good, Lee? <laughs> right, fantastic. Fucking heaven, right? But it, in fact, it's too much. It's too fucking much, right? It is, I tell you. The next morning, it was just a fucking claw. It was a... <laughs> it was just a gnarled fucking claw the next morning. That was the left hand, right? <laughs> It was just pink mist where the right hand had been. <laughs> what a state I was in. My God, I'll tell you, I went downstairs the next morning because they, they couldn't get the stretcher in the fucking lift. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this ambulance man looked at me. He said, mate, he said, surely, he said, you must, you must, have, must have seen it coming. And I said, I couldn't see anything. I said, no, I said, no. He said, you must, have, I mean, you must have known you was doing yourself damage. You must have seen the telltale signs, you know. He said, surely, he said, when the last two ejaculations were just salt, you know. <laughs> you must have got suspicious you was doing yourself damage. I said, mate, I said, if they'd have had a freeze frame facility in that room, I'd have fucking died last night. I'm telling you. Because <laughs> I do like a freeze frame. Oh. It's special, isn't it? Except on those old video recorders, when, when, when you freeze it, right, and, and everybody goes like that. <laughs> oh, it reminds me of me gran, and that, that puts me... <laughs> yeah. Listen, I must... I must uh, I've, got, I've got a bit of an announcement to make. I must, I must tell this tonight. I, 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 um, this happened to me this week. My girlfriend came in, right, and, uh, and she said to me, she said, listen, Frank, she said, uh, we're going to have to get um, a new washing machine because uh, we're going to be washing a few nappies soon. Aww. Yeah. Uh, turns out her arse muscles are packing up. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll pass on that applause. Yeah. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I said I'd stand by her, you know. Not right by her, obviously. <laughs> these fucking shoes, you know. <laughs> you, have, uh, you have been a brilliant crowd. I've had a fantastic time. Bless you. I'll see you all soon. Good night. <laughs>